All right, this is a video lesson for Unit 9, Lesson 2. As we talked about in the last lesson, Unit 9 is all about exponents. In the first lesson, we learned about the fact that if you had a to the 0, it really just equals 1. And we talked about if we had a to the negative n, that really was a message that a to the nth was on the wrong side of a fraction, so it became 1 over a to the nth to move that to the bottom. This was called the zero property, and this was called the negative exponent property. Today we're going to learn a new property called the product of powers. So the product of powers property talks about taking two multiplication chains and multiplying them together. Now it doesn't look like a multiplication chain when you get it, because it's going to be written in exponent form. But remember, x to the third means three x's being multiplied together. x squared means two x's being multiplied together. So together, if I have three x's and I have two x's, I really have five x's, which we could write as an exponent as x to the fifth. So that shows you that if I have two bases that are the same. So that means, you know, I have this x here and this x here, matching bases. If I have two bases that are the same, I can just add the exponents. 3 plus 2 equals 5. So x to the third times x to the second equals x to the 3 plus 2, which is x to the fifth. And the way we write that as a formal rule is right here. If I have m a's and n a's, all together, I have m plus n a's. And that's our newest property, and it's the only one that we'll use in this lesson, other than the first two we might call back on. So example one, I got x to the third and x to the fifth. I don't need to write this out, but I'm going to just so you see it. That means I have three x's times one, two, three, four, five x's. So all together I have 5 plus 3, I have 8 x's. The way we would write this really on a test is x to the 3rd times x to the 5th equals x to the 3 plus 5, which is x to the 8th. And that would be our answer. That's all you got to do. Now that works out really nice for us when we have a problem that could actually be a little bit harder if we weren't careful. When I have something like x to the 3rd times x to the negative 5th, I can add those numbers together to get x to the 3 plus negative 5, or x to the 3 minus 5, which is x to the negative second. Now we have to remember from yesterday that we're not allowed to have that as a final answer. Negative exponents can't be a final answer. So I have to address it by saying, oh, negative means I'm on the wrong side of a fraction. So this is really going to become 1 over x squared. Remember, when you move something down and leave the top empty, you have to put a 1 up there. So our answer would be 1 over x squared. Let's do a couple more, more a little bit slightly challenging problems. Okay. Now, this rule only works for common bases. So you notice we have x to the third, x squared. You're allowed to rearrange multiplication, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move this multiplication chain around. I can put that together to say I have three x's and I have two more x's. I have five x's. But let's not forget about the y's. I have five y's and I have 11 y's. So really, I have, or sorry, I have five y's and six y's. So really, I have 11 y's which we would write as y to the 11th. So I'm using the addition rule. I'm using the fact that we have three x's and two x's to make five x's. So really the step I didn't show is that I did x to the three plus two. And I'm using the fact that I have 11 y's. Five y's plus six y's makes 11 y's. And ultimately that gives me this final answer. Now you actually can't combine these because I don't have any x, y's. I have 5x's and I have 11 y's in the multiplication chain. So this is as far as we can go. We just leave it like that. Sometimes you'll see it without the dot. I mean, typically you'll see it without the dot. 
So they write it like this. Same answer. It means the same thing as what I wrote. Now, when I have parentheses, but I don't have any addition or subtraction or anything, it's actually just kind of trying to throw you off. It's all multiplication, so I don't really need those parentheses. I have a 2, I have an a cubed, I have a 4, I have an a to the 5th. I'm able to take this 2 and this 4 and multiply them together. We know what 2 times 4 is. It's 8. I'm able to do that. I'm also able to look at the a's and say, well, I have 3 a's and I have 5 a's, which really means I have 3 plus 5 a's or 8 a's. So my answer here, and I'll, I'll go back to my color coding, this is really 8, not because I'm counting how many a's there are for that blue 8, that 8 is because I took 2 times 4. This 8 is because I added the 3 a's and the 5 a's. There are 8 a's getting multiplied together which gives us 8, a to the 8th. And all we have left is one more um, challenging problem where we've got a lot of things going on. We've got numbers, which can be put together. We have a's, which can be put together. We have b's that can get put together. I see some negative exponents. I see some positive exponents. I see some zero exponents. So there's a lot going on in this problem. I don't want to take care of the negative exponents yet, not until I put everything together that needs to go together. So I'm going to start by putting this negative 3, this 5, and this 2 together, which if I take negative 3 times 5 times 2, it becomes negative 30. Then I'm going to start worrying about my a's. I think I'm going to write it once. So a to the negative first times a to the fourth times a to the zero well, remember, a to the 0 is really just 1. So I can get rid of that. I don't need to worry about that. Okay? So a to the 4th and a to the uh, negative 1st. How about the b's? What b's am I dealing with? b to the negative 5th. b to the 1st. If you don't see an exponent, it's to the 1st. And here's another b to the 1st. So I have b to the negative 5th times b to the 1st times b to the 1st. Let's start putting these things together. I'm still going to have that negative 30. I'm going to have a to the negative 1 plus 4. I'm going to have b to the negative 5 plus 1 plus 1. Keep cleaning up. Negative 30. a to the third. b to the negative third. But I'm not allowed to end the problem with a negative exponent. So I'm going to take this and move it to the bottom of the fraction. I'm still going to have this negative 30 up top. I'm still going to have an a cubed up top. And now I have a b to the third down on the bottom. And that's going to be our final answer. So sometimes there's a lot of work that goes into one of these problems. But remember now, we have three properties that we just need to look for. We have, from up top, we have the zero property, which is a really nice one. It just turns whatever we have to the zero power into a one. We have the negative property, which moves things to the other side of the fraction. And then today we learned the uh, power, product of powers property, which sometimes I call the addition property, that says that if the bases match, you can add the exponents. And we use those through these different examples.